Welcome, everybody. This is the Lawyer Show podcast. I'm your lawyer, Jeremy Rosenthal. Uh, this week's episode, uh, we're going to be talking about everybody's favorite topic. Uh, probably you guys talk about it a lot around the kitchen table. You guys, uh, everybody at home, the lawyers, the non-lawyers. I mean, who doesn't love bankruptcy? Who doesn't love talking about bankruptcy? Who doesn't love the rules, the procedures? Just getting into it, the underlying reasons why people might file bankruptcy, that can be kind of fun, I'm guessing. Today on the the Lawyer Show podcast, uh, we are talking to my co-counsel, Theta Page. Theta is a life recovery specialist. I'm going to butcher your moniker. I've heard it. Jeremy. Reconstructionist. Yes. A life reconstructionist. Bankruptcy is really... Everybody, okay, bankruptcy is really important stuff. It really, truly, truly is. And I don't want to, I'm going to speak out of turn here on this, which Theta does not realize that's going to happen a lot over the next hour. But bankruptcy is, in many ways, kind of what allows people in America to fail. And it allows them to take chances they might not otherwise take. Uh, and it allows them to get a fresh start uh, and to, to create new and better opportunities. It's also a, a good way to screw credit card companies, which is great too. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Theta Page, but uh, before I do that, I do want to point out that our ground wire, Heidi Stark, we've got her on the microphone today. Heidi is here in the in the off, in the very small chance that we get too lawyery. She's the ground wire because she can bring this back down to earth. But I promise everybody, I promise everybody, we are going to get into the nitty gritty codes, procedures, deadlines, trustees, bankruptcy estates, defalcation, fraud. We're going to get into all of it today, so don't you worry. But in in case it gets a little too too fast, too hard. Heidi's going to be here to ground us. I'm going to break it, break it down for everybody. Thank yeah. you for being here, yeah. Heidi. Happy to be here. We couldn't do this without you. So, Theta Page, introduce yourself to Lawyer Show Podcast Nation. All righty. So, we're not going to talk about defalcation. No defalcation. No defalcation. Okay. I, I, I've got a thing for defalcation. You do. I think it's the criminal side of you. Thank and, you. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> I want it on my tombstone. She knew nothing about criminal. She knew nothing about criminal. Yes. Well, that that doesn't that shouldn't cost too much. I mean, those aren't too many letters. Now, if you want to put defalcation on your gravestone, yeah. that could run you some extra money. She yeah. knew nothing about. But yeah. I think you do. You just avoid it. Yeah, I I, I know about it, but mm -hmm. I don't want to talk about it because. Because I'm about that fresh start. The fresh, the fresh start. Yes. The the the, the fresh, the, the the ocean breeze and the fresh spray just just going across the bow of your boat. That's you 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 give people freedom. Talk about your career path. How did you become the reconstructionist? Okay, so I decided when I was 14 that I wanted to be a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you know this, but I wanted to be a criminal. Defense attorney. <laughs> okay, you didn't. You didn't wake up at fourteen, and you weren't like, "Oh, bankruptcy." No, no, that didn't happen to you. No. You're not one of the. Okay, no, I I read a book by James Baldwin called "If mm -hmm. Beale Street Could Talk," and it was about someone who was wrongfully accused and they were jailed, and that's really what piqued my interest in becoming a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Because prior to that, my mother had trained me from like age one and a half to say I want to be a pediatrician when I grow up. Mm. When I realized that pediatricians sometimes gave little kids shots, I said, that's not for me. Oh. I'm about making people feel good, not about making them hurt. Not, not, not the long range. Well, we're, we could also like, I get it. I yeah. Get it. So, so I went to college at Mount Holyoke College, which is in South Hadley, Massachusetts. Mount Holyoke forever shall be. I love my college. You and said you could sing. I was kidding. Oh, because I'm sure they had a song there. Yeah, yeah. From bar room to bar room, we stumble or something I, like that. But I talk singing is acceptable here. <laughs> okay, that's how I, when I play my guitar, my daughter wants me to play my guitar every once in a while, 
and I'll, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll hit the strings and then I'll hit, I'll knock on it and it's all tox singing. Tox singing is fine. Okay. Okay. So yeah. school, school in Massachusetts, you grew up in Massachusetts? No. Um, I'm originally from Detroit. So okay. even though I'm from Detroit and everyone, especially if you're as old as I am, you had hopes of being a Motown star. Um, but, and I was in a group, you know, mm-hmm. when I was seven, were you? seven or eight. Yeah. You were in a group. Everybody was, everybody was because you never know. Barry Gordy might discover you. So everyone had a group, but nah. did, what did, what did instruments singing or was it just like dancing or singing, what was, what was the, dancing. what was the, what was the, what was the, there, there may be old reel to reel films of me dancing on tables. I mean, no every, everybody had a group. Siblings, neighborhood kids. <laughs> Yeah, that- whoever was whoever you could you know corral to be in your group. So uh-huh. it was okay. some neighborhood girls, and we had a group. And okay, but that didn't pan out. But college and law school did. Okay, well, so. fortunately, you're you're. Uh, I've always told people I, you know, growing up, wanted to be a baseball player, wanted to play for the Dodgers. I was cursed. I I, I was cursed, and and the Lord gave me a body fit for a lawyer. So I've I've had to I've had to do this instead. Uh, it's worked out okay for you though. I don't know. I could have been a pretty good dodger. Okay. I I've got a lot of awareness for like base running. I, but they want to hear about bankruptcy and they want to hear more about you. Um, so you went after Massachusetts uh, and after undergraduate um, straight to law school. Good. Not don't pass go. I mean, just straight you into law school. Kept Keep the legs going. turning. Okay. And you and went to Pitt. Is that right? That is right. Okay. And that I, Heidi told me this. She she did all the. She's been stalking you, in case you weren't aware. Friendly stalking. Okay. Friendly. Nothing. No, we're not in restraining order territory. Not yet. I'm pretty boring, so she probably didn't really see a lot. Like, I like to knit, and I like genealogy. Um, I'm, I'm pretty boring. We that, don't that, even have dogs. The dogs went over the Rainbow Bridge, and my husband is like, no more dogs. No more dogs? So. Okay. Yeah. So, law school at Pitt. Yeah. It was, uh, it was law school. I hated it. Pretty much every minute, every second of law school. Tell us how you really feel. I feel like you're being guarded here. I, I'm very I guarded. I feel like you're, I feel like, <laughs> I, I just, it's okay to be open about it. If you didn't like it, just say it. Yeah. You, you hated it? Every minute Why did it. you, so next week on the Lawyer Show podcast, so everybody's aware, we are going to have a round table of law students. That's the plan. Wow. That's okay. the plan. If I can, if I can wrestle everybody here. That's the plan. If you next week, when if and when you turn it, tune in. We have three or four people. Next week, when when they tune in, if you don't see me with law students, you'll know that I was unable to coordinate everything. But that's the plan, and I will let them know. Well, they'll probably just tell us how miserable it was. Why did you not like it? Um, I found it to be intellectually unstimulating. No kidding. Yeah, and I didn't, I didn't expect that. So. It was awful. Did I just lose my sound? I'm fine. <laughs> no, it's okay. Okay. Um, okay. So I, I didn't like it. We could never like take it. away your sound. <laughs> and we would never would, yeah. not on purpose. I did like my tax class. Mm-hmm. Liked my tax professor a lot. Mm-hmm. And his uh, wife and mother had gone to Mount Holyoke, so... That's probably why there was I liked. a connection there. Yeah. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, I took a summer class in law school, uh, and it was I took a tax I took a tax class, and I actually really dug it too. Um, I thought it was the very cool concepts. I, I liked it so much, I even went entered the SMU tax clinic for about a week, <laughs> and then it dawned on me, oh, and, and it, it people came in because the clinics in law school they um, we may. We'll probably get more into this next week, but the clinics in law school they take they take cases because they're academically interesting, mm-hmm. right? They don't take it because you're a nice guy. They don't take it because you need help. They don't take it for for a number of reasons that you, you might think, uh, not necessarily just charity, but they take it because oh man, this guy's got an interesting problem, right? Like if you go to a university hospital and they're like, oh wow, this guy's got a really rare disease. This is going to be fun. Let's look at this. So they, so the the interesting problem tax problems were not. They were maybe I would say 
overly intellectual and over intellectually stimulating to me. How's that? Okay. So you liked it, but yeah. and I probably liked it because it was a code mm-hmm. and and bankruptcy is all about the code. So I think I'm just a code kind of girl. So all right, the, the rules. Yeah, the rules. Okay, it's it's very. You you have deadlines. You know you know where you're going. Mm-hmm. There can be some oopsies and surprises, but pretty much you know where you're going. And I think I like a well defined path. Did you did you like bankruptcy in law school? I did not take bankruptcy no. in law school. Okay. I probably I took secured transactions, and so I I knew and I liked that class, and I also like banking. Now there is a fun topic there: secured transactions. Yes. I hope we can get into that. <laughs> People are going to go crazy. I I did not take secured transactions in law school. I studied for it on the bar. No, that's not true. I did take secured transactions. That's how memorable it was. And I remember our professor uh, and all the law school problems, he used to say he used to have a fictitious bank called, I think, Gun Belt Savings, Gun Belt Savings and Loan. And anyway, uh, that that's all I remember about that. Uh, but secured transactions has to do, uh, Heidi, Yes, fill me in because it sounds fascinating. Do, do you know? Do you know, sir? Do you, so, Heidi, do you have a car? I do have a car. Do, you, is, do okay. you do you have a loan on your car? I do. Okay. Well, you signed an agreement when you purchased your car, and they took a security interest in your car. Oh. And they perfected their security interest. That means they filed it in the right place in the state. So, if you don't pay your car they can repossess your car. Okay. So remember. It's security. It's security. Yeah. yeah. Secu- remember, yes. always pay your car mm-hmm. unless you don't want your car. Then, then you don't have to pay for it. You get it towed for free, do you? You do. <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll take it. Also, uh, I remember too about secured transactions. You've got the holder in due course, right? This is... HDC. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, you, you go to... Um, you go to the banks getting a lot of trouble too because if so, if they get too casual with mm-hmm. with some of their customers uh, and they don't make them endorse things properly it, it's probably no fun for a bank to have a ten thousand dollar check that gets disputed because um, the bank could have to come out of pocket for it right yeah. and occasionally that happens in bankruptcies oh yeah okay so. well, let's we, we've been delaying this for everybody they're on the edge of their seats at home or in their cars, or hopefully in their law offices. Um, they've been on the edge of their seats waiting for us to dig into the bankruptcy. Okay. So you're at Pitt Law School. You didn't take bankruptcy. How did you get from A to B? How did you get to bankruptcy? So I graduated from law school, and uh, Heidi probably knows the year, but it was oh, a she long, knows. It was a long time ago. We don't talk years here. Okay, good. But it was the year that more people graduated from law school than had ever graduated. And the country was in the midst of a recession. Mm -hmm. And there weren't any jobs for most of the people who had graduated from law school. And I never intended to work for myself. I always thought I was going to have a corporate career. And I did have a corporate career for a while. And so my mother and stepfather were living in the Dallas area, and I came to visit them Mm -hmm. and talked my way into a job at a cocktail party. Okay. Love that story. And so... Let's have that. Well, Well, we don't... I mean, we don't have to... I just... I kept... My mother said, this person's a lawyer, that person's a lawyer, so... Okay. I wanted to be sure that I met all the lawyers. And I'm actually pretty shy, but, you know, when you don't have a job... You need to, like, not be shy. You were like, <laughs> let me sing the Mount Holyoke song, right? You you were like, I'll talk, sing it, but no, no that, I was, that's not. Hi, my name is Theta Page. I just graduated from University of Pittsburgh School of Law, mm-hmm. and I'm looking for a job. Mm-hmm. And one person said, oh, we're not hiring. So I just kept. You were like, enough with you. Nope. I just, just waited, came back an hour later. And he said, we're still not hiring. And she just came same back. one, same person? <laughs> same person. Same person. Okay, I thought, I thought you were working the room. Okay, keep nope. going. No, came back an hour later, and he, I guess he was sick of me, and he said, just come by the office Monday. Good. So I came by the office Monday, and I sat in the lobby for about three hours, and one partner had been in and out. I think he'd been to court and back and back again, and he said, who are you and what are you doing here? Mm-hmm. My name's Theta Page. I'm looking for a job. 
and he happened to be the partner who practiced bankruptcy and he said well come back to my office and talk to me so he hired me so i started the next morning man that is a pretty good story <laughs> so i uh, i needed a job uh-huh well, you and know. you also probably recognize that Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex, particularly Collin County, is the center of the universe. Actually, I did know. You did. You I already knew this. I did not know. But you learned. But you were. It was obvious very quickly. Well, he had a job, and I needed a job. Well, that helps too. Yeah. Okay. So, and, uh, what kind of bankruptcy did you do with him? So, a lot of Chapter Eleven work, which is reorganization. And mm -hmm. the thing that I liked about bankruptcy is that there was a lot of negotiation in the hallway before going into the courtroom, and mm -hmm. most of the deals were cut in the hallway. And okay. I, I enjoyed that. So, what? Uh, okay. So, take us through bankruptcy forty thousand foot view. Okay. Uh, g give everybody at home. Uh, you're sorry. Before I do that. You're watching J.P. Kathy and the Crew Network. You can see J.P. Kathy and the Crew between 7.30 and 9, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. This is The Lawyer Show. We are on on Thursdays uh, between noon and 1. I am your lawyer, Jeremy Rosenthal. Today, my co-counsel is bankruptcy lawyer Theta Page. Okay, Theta, so you were, you were going to give us a 40,000-foot view of, of, of bankruptcy. Yeah. So when most people think of bankruptcy, they think about reorganization or liquidation. So you have chapter seven, chapter 13, chapter 11, chapter 12, and those are literally chapters in the bankruptcy code. Most individuals are looking at a seven or 13. And sevens are sometimes called straight bankruptcy. A 13 is a reorganization and that's the wage earner plan. So you gotta, you have to have some money and you have to have money left over mm -hmm. at the end of the month after you pay your necessities. And then you have an opportunity to restructure your debt. Most people who are filing a chapter 13 are filing a 13 because they're behind on their house. Maybe they didn't make their car payment, but they want to keep their car. So chapter 13 gives them the opportunity to get caught up on back payments. Mm -hmm. It also, in a 13, you can do what's called cram down your car. That means you can pay the value of your car. So maybe you had, people in Texas really like pickup trucks and they're really expensive. Mm -hmm. So maybe you had a truck and you decided you were going to trade your truck in, but you were upside down. You owed more on the truck. And the salesperson at the dealership says, don't worry, we'll roll over what you're behind on. Mm -hmm. So now you have a truck. Maybe your truck is worth 40000 but you owe sixty. You might have the opportunity through a bankruptcy to only pay forty, the value of that truck, because you're cramming it down. So we bankruptcy lawyers like to call that, let them eat steel. Let the car creditors eat steel. I so like it. I figured you'd like that. I like that. Uh, yeah. Okay, so, uh, all right. Chapter 13 and Chapter 7, you said, are for individuals uh, mainly? Mainly. Hu I mean, human beings. The other one's maybe a little more appropriate for companies. Right. A chapter. Okay. A company can file a Chapter 7, but there are two schools of thought on that because a company or corporate entity doesn't get a discharge, which is the magic thing you want in bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. It's a discharge order. It says you're no longer legally mm -hmm. obligated to pay the debt. So okay. that's always what you're shooting for in a bankruptcy. Got to get to my discharge. To give everybody a, a, a good idea at home, I've always equated courts to restaurants, um, mm, okay. which is surprising to Heidi because normally my all of my analogies tend to be centered around sports. And because you're such a big sports fan with all your knitting and genealogy, I'll... I'll well, s restaurants, yeah. Okay, so okay. I... I, I tell people that, look, I can only get you what's on the menu with a court. Um, I can only do for you what the court can do for me. I cannot cure. I can't make you happy necessarily. I can't. Uh, if you come into Chili's and you order the lasagna, I cannot get it for you. If I'm the waiter, I might want to get it for you. I would bend heaven and earth to get it for you. They don't have lasagna at Chili's, at least. I don't think they have lasagna. I used to work at Chili's. Everybody who knows me knows that I love it. I talk incessantly about it. If you're, I don't know what you're doing after the podcast here, and if there's a Chili's in the neighborhood, we it's, may do that. It's right up the road. Is it really? It is. Man, it's fun. And again, only in Collin County, the center of the universe. 
right? Is there a Chili's right up every road? Yes. <laughs> now, it's funny, too. My daughter this morning, uh, was she was asking me, she says, why is it that all the TV stations, all the news, everywhere, when they want to talk about Dallas, they show all the big buildings? And I explained to her, well, because we have Chili's in the suburbs, and what are they going to show? Like, in Atlanta, when they're talking about Dallas-Fort Worth, here's here's a Chili's. <laughs> or a mall. Or a mall. Yeah. We've got plenty of that. Um, so... I've got a, and, and, and I make a lot of really, really probably bad analogies, and then I kind of have to unwind and get back to where we were. So, okay. I can only get you what the court can give to me. That's it. I can only get you the relief that the, that the court can assign. If in a plaintiff's case, not that I do plaintiff's work, uh, but if it, in a plaintiff's case, I could say, well, I can get you money. Okay, I can't get you your back back. Your 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 your. I can't right. get your leg fixed. I can't get this. I can't get that. I can get you money. Okay, um, I can get a car back if it's been repoed. And that's that's my. So <laughs> what what somebody is doing in a bankruptcy is they are going to a federal court because mm-hmm. bankruptcy is all it's all federal. It's all federal court. None of it's mm-hmm. state. None of it's really local. I mean, you we have local offices and and this all works locally, but these are federal offices, and you go to a federal bankruptcy judge, and that judge essentially orders almost anybody and everybody in your life that they can that they have to cease any types of collection efforts in fact there's the automatic stay right do you want to talk about the automatic stay and it's really automatic Mm -hmm. so for instance this afternoon i'm going to file a case Mm -hmm. for a client and i'll file it electronically and i will have a case number immediately that means immediately all his creditors are stayed because mm-hmm. of the automatic stay. It really is automatic. So if I file his case at 304 and a creditor calls him at 305, that creditor has violated the automatic stay. There's no notice requirement. And if that creditor does that a few more times, then we're probably going to sue that creditor in bankruptcy and maybe even not even need to sue but maybe just send a terse letter Mm -hmm. and then my client might get back all the money he paid for his bankruptcy filing and maybe even some more so the automatic stay is pretty powerful and and you get in trouble with the federal judge if you violate it absolutely okay and nothing and this is another thing that we taught i have said this on the podcast on the lawyer show podcast before nothing says i love you quite like certified mail Right. <laughs> there you may let you know we're thinking about you. Right. So, uh, okay. So when you file bankruptcy, all your creditors, uh, they are prevented from collecting. Yes. Okay. Now there are creditors and there are creditors, right? Right. What's the difference between the blood suckers at the credit card companies and say the bank who owns my house? So the bank who owns your house is a secured creditor. Remember secured Mm -hmm. transactions? Right. So that's a secured creditor. If you have a lien on your car, that's a secured creditor. If you owe the IRS a lot of money, they They win. They might have a lien on your house, (laughs) your car, your underwear, everything. I don't know. Can they do that? Is that... I don't. It's called a blanket lien. A blanket lien. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So all, all the way down to your socks. Yeah. The okay. IRS <laughs> is pretty powerful. They get with it. I've always, uh, w- when people ask me about the federal government and their collection efforts, whether it's with the IRS or not, I don't do tax and and I don't give tax advice because I like practicing law and not having right. blanket liens of my own. Uh, I always I tell them that those the, the government liens burn to the center of the earth. Um, <laughs> they 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 get every, so Medicare Medicaid. Uh, what any time they put a lien or try to make a collection action, they get it, or they're first in line, right? Yeah. Typically, yeah. So uh, a a secure okay, a, a, and tell me if I'm right about this. If if on occasion, and I know that wills are somewhat different in in many ways. But things with title tend to be secured more often, right? That is true. And that's because, so uh, why, why, why is that? Uh, because they, they're they loaning you money. They're taking more of a risk than mm-hmm. Citibank Visa. Citibank Visa is taking a risk, but sometimes Citibank Visa is charging you 
24.99% interest. Right. So are they really taking a risk or mm-hmm. are they making money for the bankers? Right. They're making a lot of money for the bankers. So, yeah. and, and that's not to say that the mortgage company isn't making money, but they've, their risk is different. So that they may have a $300,000 risk. Mm-hmm. And in this real estate market, they, that means that they probably have some, a property with some equity. So they're, and, they're in good shape. And with a lien, you can, you can do what's called clouding title. Yes. M- meaning that if, let's say, let's say I'm in bankruptcy, um, and this actually happened to me. Um, bankruptcy hasn't happened to me, not yet. If it does, I know where I'm going. You know who to call. I'm I here for you. Uh, but uh, we actually, uh, when, we, when we bought a house, our person was in bankruptcy, Ooh. which was crazy. <laughs> We, and, and we didn't know that at the time, and we made an offer, and we get into and on those disclosures, right? Do you have lead paint? Do you have this? Do you have that? Um, is there mold in here? Are you in bankruptcy? It was like we were looking, reading his disclosures. No, 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 no. Yes, no, 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 no. I'm like, wait a minute. And I, I ask our title company or whoever is that a? Because I'm a lawyer. Like that probably is an issue, isn't it? And, and everybody just, oh my God, you know, what's... We've got to get an order from the court called the bankruptcy lawyer nonstop every hour until we get the order. It was, it was not, it was not pleasant. Um, but uh, you can cloud title, meaning that uh, if you have title to something, you can make it hard for that title to be transferred, right? <sighs> not or, really. We can, no? We can fix that. Well, it's I know just, you're the reconst... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, talk, talk about talk about how that works, how title works, and how how. So, in your instance, the title company probably said, "We can't close without an order from the bankruptcy court," because the the role of the title company is to ensure title, mm-hmm. and so they want to do. They cross their T's, they dot their I's, they do double and back flips, because they're taking a risk, and so. They want an order from a federal judge that says it's okay to close. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a matter of filing a motion, notifying creditors, but I'm sure you got your order from the bankruptcy court and you were able to close. It might move a closing a couple mm-hmm. days if there truly is an emergency. If one of my clients is trying to sell their house and they tell me the buyer's going to walk, we can do an emergency order. And, and so it's... It's a. It's not really a cloud. It's more like a little misty fog. Yeah. Like a like a like some dirt on your shoe. Yeah. We okay. Can, we can clear that up pretty quickly. Y- you get rid of it. Um, yeah. I remember that everybody kind of hit the panic button, and uh, I, I think the fear was that the U.S. trustee, if we had done all these things and not notified the bankruptcy court, that they could actually come back and undo the transaction. And yeah, yeah, and and the house that I'm now living in, they could say, thank you, Jeremy, this is actually ours. Right. And then, you know, there you are sitting there with your wife and your daughter having to, okay, we're, we're actually moving out. With I know brush in my hand. Right. I know we just moved in, but we're moving out. So exactly. What, uh, what is a trustee? Can you tell everybody what the trustee is in a bankruptcy? The trustee in a chapter seven plays a different role than the trustee in a chapter 13. And if you are filing a chapter 11, you might be American Airlines, General Motors, you could be an individual and file a chapter 11. There typically isn't a trustee involved Mm -hmm. unless things aren't going well. And then somebody might ask the court for a trustee. In a chapter seven, the role of the trustee is to see, are there any assets available for the trustee to sell for the benefit of the creditors. Most of us have assets that we can protect. I mean, most of us have furniture in the house, some retirement accounts, Mm -hmm. our house or cars. And in Texas, our exemptions are very, very liberal. I know it's hard to say liberal in Texas, but our exemptions are very, very liberal. So just don't say California. That's what triggers people here. Yeah. Now but, in California, that doesn't. When you say Texas, I don't know that it moves the needle. But okay, what about Heidi's got several lake houses, and she's got some uh, white tigers uh, oh running boy. around one of her one of her big properties. Are those exempt? No. No. Is no. that if she files I'm, bankruptcy? I'm going to tell Heidi we're going to have to put you in a Chapter 13. Okay. And you're going to have to pay the value of those lake houses. 
I know, I know. What but about the sea dews and the... Yeah, the toys. Yeah, the, all that the stuff. toys. The toys can be a problem. Okay. Yeah. So, meaning that you got to pay for the value. You can give up your toys if you want to, you know. And so, doesn't the tr- U.S. trustee, they, they represent the United States? No. Or no, they don't. No. Okay. So, the trustee in a Chapter 7, they're called panel trustees. So, they're they're actually in, in the Eastern District where we sit, mm-hmm. Collin County, Denton County. We have four panel trustees. Two are actually bankruptcy lawyers, so they have regular bankruptcy practices. One is a CPA, and the other person, she's a bankruptcy trustee, but she's not an accountant. She's not a lawyer. She is married to a bankruptcy lawyer. So they, you can apply for those positions. I don't mm-hmm. know if you remember Robert Newhouse, who played for the Dallas Cowboys. He died a few years ago, but he was a Chapter 7 trustee in Dallas for years. Oh. So that was kind of his retirement career. No kidding. Yeah. Okay. And so they get paid <laughs> a de minimis amount of money. Okay. This is yeoman's work. <laughs> and what they're looking for are asset cases, a case where somebody truly does have assets. And every now and then that happens. So when Heidi comes in with her Chapter 7 and she says, I'm poor Heidi, uh, Jeremy doesn't pay me anything. I have to default on all my loans. And then we that then when she discloses to the bankruptcy court uh, that all she owns is a refrigerator and some bread and some mayonnaise and some she can make bologna sandwiches. And then you say, well, what about that boat deal? And she says, oh, well, that's not owned by me. That's owned by my Nevada corporation and starts winking at you. That's what the U.S. is. That what the trustee is? That's his job is to spot stuff like that. Right. So okay. How does that work? So you have to disclose all of your assets when you're filing a bankruptcy. Mm-hmm. Um, I I really like to make the process pretty painful for pain, painful painless <sighs> for my clients because they've been in so much pain. So I told there you, you go. I like I'm not into pain, so I want to like uh-huh. let's let's make this easy. But you do your bankruptcy filing can be anywhere from fifty to eighty pages. And it's all about, you know, Jerry Maguire, show me the money. It's all about mm-hmm. what do you own and what do you owe. And you're committing probably some kind of federal crime by going into bankruptcy and saying, I don't own anything. And they're onto that game. I mean, they know that game. They, they know, yeah. they know that, that, that when people are being tricky and they, if you get caught doing that, that's <sighs> not yeah. defalcation. That's a different sin. Right. But, but yeah, I, my record's pretty clean. This has never happened to any of my clients. But yes, you could go to federal prison for bankruptcy crimes. You probably do your best to fish it out on the front end when somebody's coming in and wanting to play games. Um, By and large, most people aren't playing games. Okay. By and large, most people are filing, I would say, probably a year or two later than they should because people try to do whatever they can to pay their debts. So there's this stigma that people are just stiffing their creditors and they're really Mm -hmm. bad people and Nothing could be further from the truth. I mean, one of the things that really pains me is people have liquidated their retirement accounts yeah. in order to pay their debt. And, you know, frankly, J.P. Morgan Chase, your Visa card, they don't need your retirement as much as you are going to need your retirement in 10, 15, or 20 years. Um, I didn't... In, uh initially intend to kind of talk about this topic, but I do think it's something that we might want to cover. Um, before I get there, you're watching uh, the Lawyer Show podcast. We are on between noon and one on Thursdays. Uh, we're on the JP, Kathy, and the Crew Network. They are on between 7.30 and 9, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I am your lawyer, Jeremy Rosenthal. My co-counsel today is Theta Page. We're talking bankruptcy. The one thing I wanted to cover, because I think it's important, although it's not... It, it's not really directly well we see these commercials for these uh credit repair companies and things like that i mean i'm gonna make a rhetorical statement you tell me if i'm right i've already declared heidi that credit card companies are the what did i call them evil vermin whatever the devil i don't know uh these these credit repair places if at all possible or worse right um, pro- that probably that and some of the debt management companies, mm-hmm. uh, like we can call, don't file bankruptcy, call us. Right. Talk about well, why that's, t- talk about, talk about why that's not such a hot idea. So I always tell people, 
anyone who's coming to see me, they have a problem. <laughs> so if they're unlike me, no, they, everybody, everybody loves like coming. To my, everybody <laughs> loves coming to my office on a criminal case. But so if there are good programs out there. I don't know about them because when people come to me, it's because they've been in some debt management program. They've paid them every every month for a year or two years, and then the company disappears, and their debt hasn't been paid. Mm -hmm. So they've lost all this money. They're now getting sued by their credit card companies because, BS, yes, your credit card company will sue you. There's this misconception mm -hmm. about if I don't pay my visa, like what's the big deal? Well, they will sue you. Mm -hmm. So that kind of is a big deal. So that happens to people who go into these debt management programs sometimes. So they mm -hmm. end up having spent the money. Now they have, they don't have that money and they're having to file bankruptcy anyway. So that's what I mean about people usually file about a year or two later than they should because they've done, they've literally. They, they try to tough it out. Yeah, they've exhausted every, every possible avenue to avoid being in bankruptcy. Right. Uh, and, and these uh, these debt car uh, these uh, debt management type companies. I mean, I've always kind of thought that what happens is you walk in, you you, you kind of list out all your debt, and then they pick up the phone and they call the credit card company and they're like, "Hey, Joe's here. You know, he's telling us he's got four hundred and twenty three bucks left. Let's let's you know you and me visa. Let's you and me split it. What do you what do you say? So I don't know if that's how they operate, but um, I mean it's like they hit you in the head with a frying pan and they say there you're debt free, right? Kinda. And and yeah. and, and then then again you just may not be debt free. So uh, okay, so we've talked a little bit about Chapter Seven, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we've and talked the a trustee and the trustee and there's a trustee in a Chapter Thirteen. Okay, so that is really more like a a debt management program because when you're in bankruptcy, when you're in a chapter 13, you pay the trustee, then the trustee pays your creditors mm -hmm. and creditors are paid by class. So secured creditors get paid, priority creditors get paid. So what, who are the priority creditors? The IRS. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Unless your tax debt is really old. Okay. And you timely filed your tax return. Okay. So do you want to take a stab at my record for discharging of tax debt. You're undefeated? No, I mean the dollar amount. Oh, oh, oh. Of tax uh, debt I've gotten rid of. I don't like coming on and talking about, like, victory over the government. I'm afraid. Okay. But go. This so is you, her. You go. You. You, <laughs> you don't what, even want to. What's your record? 120000 120000 I can tell you the highest DWI I've ever acquitted. That's fun at a cocktail party full of people who are, who their jaws hit the floor. Okay, I don't even know what that means. Remember, my tombstone is gonna say she I know nothing, nothing about, about criminal, criminal law. Yeah, so, uh, well, we won't get there. Okay. But, but anyway. Um, but, but in a chapter 13, that you're paying the trustee, the trustee is in turn paying your creditors. And there's a formula that says how much your unsecured creditors, that would be Visa, MasterCard, mm -hmm loans unsecured loans mm -hmm. you know maybe you went to main street financial and got a loan and they said that they had a security interest but they really didn't because mm -hmm. they didn't perfect their security interest so um that kind of thing medical bills payday medical loans. Bills. Oh, okay, and, and okay so to to give everybody and i know we've already talked about what's secured and what's unsecured secured is anybody who has a lien Right. Typically of, of some flavor, of some type. Right. So if, if, if everybody thinks, and, and the way that you get a lien, the way that anybody gets a lien is that they have to file it typically with the county. Am I right about that? Or am I missing any other types of liens? I'm sure I am because I don't do this, but. And you do your UCC1, so we're really getting in the weeds. You're going to... No, they love this. Uniform commercial... I go too far, but I'll, I'll let this pass. Uh, you'll let the... <laughs> uniform commercial code. Okay. The, I like that class in law school, too. So what? We I'm have four sure classes did. I liked uh, in law school. I'm sure you And they all that, dealt yeah. with money and the code. Man, well, you, you are a kindred spirit. You like money. Jeremy there's money. a lawyer... Uh, uh, name dropping is also very important on the Lawyer Show podcast. There's a really fabulous human being uh a lawyer i don't think he practices anymore his name is philip grubbs do you know do you know philip i know the name you yes know philip. okay uh and philip 
has has always said he told me if you don't have money you don't have legal problems makes a lot of sense this is true many in, in, in some ways a so anything so the way somebody gets a lien is they have to file something with the county typically and that can be f- there's a number of different types of debt so so let's say let's say somebody owes lawyer jeremy money right if somebody had, not that that ever happens um but let's say in theory somebody owed me money I don't know that I could go to the county and get a lien on whatever they own. I would have to probably get a judgment, right? Right. To, I, which means I'd have to sue my client. Right. Which is the number one question on your malpractice questionnaire is, do you sue your client? Because if you do, they're going to turn around and sue you. And you're going to get a malpractice claim even when you didn't commit malpractice. So, um, But I would have to sue my client. I would have to get a judgment. And then I could file a lien at that point with the county. Yes. Right. Okay. Now... There are medical liens. Yeah, but... How do those work? But that's... Maybe you were in a car accident. Okay. And so then you've got some litigation, and then there are medical liens in that regard. But just Mm -hmm. for... A lot of my clients have a lot of medical issues. Maybe it's cancer, um, some things going on with their kiddos. And so they just owe a lot of doctors and hospitals. There are no liens involved in that. They're, those are just your general unsecured creditors. Mm-hmm. And that's what we call them, general unsecured. Mm-hmm. As opposed to priority unsecured, which is the IRS, when they haven't filed a lien. Uh, as the lawyer, do you, you hop to the top? Of course. Well, priority. Hallelujah. Yeah, priority. Okay. Yeah, no, it's obvious. It goes without yeah. saying. Yeah. But as a lawyer in a, I mean, but in a chapter seven, okay. If my client doesn't pay me before mm-hmm. I file their case, I'm no different than Mastercard or Visa. Okay. My whatever they owe me is discharged in bankruptcy. That's a an interesting point too, because um, obviously you're the folks who come to you have financial problems, right? So nobody who comes to you. I suppose in a criminal case, we get a lot of folks who come to us. Maybe they can pay us. Maybe they can't pay us. A lot of times we have some folks who may do quite well financially that may come to us. So that part's not there. Every single buddy who comes to you is in financial distress. Every one of them. True. Uh, but that doesn't mean they're broke. Right. So how, how, how do you make sure? So, so okay, so I, you, you said in the, in the Chapter 7s you got to get paid up front. Yeah. Um, how do you get paid otherwise? Because some of these bankruptcies can be quite complex and a lot of them, it's going to take a little more sweat equity than just you filing some paperwork with the government. Absolutely. So so talk about that. So um, one of the things that you have to do is you have to figure out what do you own, what do you owe, and how can we protect what you own? So that's where there's a lot of strategy involved. And sometimes it may take us a year or two to get your case filed because we're protecting what you own. Okay. That's not the that's not the norm. Most people whatever they own we can protect. Cuz okay. again, Texas is liberal. You can own your home free and clear. Mm-hmm. You can have a million dollar house that you own free and clear. You can have a Tesla that you own free and clear. So no no lien on your Tesla. No lean on your Rolls Royce. You looked at me. I don't. I don't. And you can protect those assets when you file a bankruptcy. Is it, does that have some, anything to do with the homestead exemptions? Yes. Okay. Yes. Let's talk about the homestead exemption because I think that that's something that gets kicked around quite a bit. Um, and, and folks may not quite understand what the homestead exemption is. Don't, don't ask me about the acreage because I always look up the acreage. So okay. you can have a house... Mm-hmm. and some acres the issue is how many acres okay and that's i don't know that off the top of my head but the homestead or what, what is the homestead how does it work legally what's um so if you have a home in texas that is your primary residence so we're not talking about heidi's lake houses. lake houses yeah but the primary residence where you live that is a protected asset in texas but but what that means is I probably can't protect your lake house. So mm-hmm. you're either going to liquidate your lake house for the benefit of your creditors or the trust. You're going to pay the trustee 
the value of your lake house. Okay. What, uh, tell me what you think of this again, because uh, I grew up, uh, my, many of my formative years were in Texas in the seventh grade. You were required to take Texas history. You took Texas history I in did. the seventh grade? Oh, you, yes. You did, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and I was a history major in college. Oh, okay. Um, uh, what I've always, and, and it really does, I mean, history can be useful, right? I love history. Oh, okay. It, See, this is not like you because you were into the codes and the books and the... Yeah, but I love history. You were digging the Remember, tax Remember, I'm stuff. the genealogy person. And ge okay, you're right. You're, uh, I just I'm did sorry. my DNA, by the way. I'm 5% Swedish. I knew that. <laughs> I didn't. I, okay, <laughs> now, criminal law and, and, and yeah, so I, we, we fight warrants for DNA and do all that stuff, so I, I'm... It's interesting stuff. Um, so history and homestead. History and homestead. So Texas, what I, if I'm ever, t again, I, I never talk about the homestead exemption with clients because it never comes up typically in criminal law. But if, I, if I'm ever in just whatever conversation, the speech I give, uh, Penny Robe, who we've had on the show, does a puppet show, and maybe I can turn this into a puppet show of some sort. But Texas recruited... Uh, we, we were a colony of Mexico, right? We were, it, this was Mexico. And of course, the Americans who moved here to Texas, uh, or I don't know if they would be Americans or I think, or, or not at that point, but they, they came here, settlers, pioneers, and all that stuff, of course, naturally did what Texans like to do and kick everybody out and, and kind of take it for themselves. So they recruited every uh, deadbeat. But they, they recruited a lot of debtors from Tennessee, from Kentucky, the mm -hmm. volunteers. And basically they said, you come to Texas, we will wipe out that bar tab that you had in Kentucky. Gone. We'll, we'll wipe that out. Yeah. yeah you, you, you just come to Texas and there will be no debt here. So I think the homestead exemption dates back to that. I think it dates back to the fact that Texas was, in fact, a debtor's colony when Stephen F. Austin um, was... And, and feel free, anybody out there, to correct me if I'm wrong. You guys don't like commenting on anything we do, so I won't think. Even if I'm wrong here, you guys, I dare you to get online and 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 there, the gauntlet has been thrown. Uh, well, I'm about to correct you. Well, I, we don't even have to go on Facebook, so or on on the, on the <laughs> chats. So so let let's have it let's have it reconstructionist. So I'm not sure because I did not take seventh grade history. I mm -hmm. didn't go to seventh grade in Texas, but what I always understood the homestead mm -hmm. exemption was it's because there were lots of gamblers in Texas. From that we got from Tennessee and Kentucky. Well, wherever they came I from, know but they Tennessee, were Tennessee. I don't know Kentucky. Okay, and they were. You ever heard the expression, I'm going to bet the farm or I'm going to bet the ranch? Uh, I, I am familiar. Okay. And so to keep the little old lady at home and the kids mm -hmm. from losing their home, that's why there's the homestead exemption because, you know, maybe the husband was out betting the ranch oh, well, in a car You game. think it's the husband? Yes, it was. You have proof of this. I don't, but back in those days, it probably was. Okay. Okay. I mean, well, so I will. I, uh, I'm fine taking this, your generalization. Um, we'll, 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 we'll leave it at that. This goes back many, many years. Many, many years. Maybe uh, a couple hundred years. But Texas was, uh, to your point, the, the 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 Texas is an okay place to be in debt. And it, and yes, and That's very true. And not only that, it makes uh, this is another misconception that a lot of folks have. Again, we're kind of leaving the bankruptcy trail here individuals make very, very, people uh, in Texas, individuals typically are more afraid of lawsuits, I think, than they ought to be because the vast majority of people um, in Texas would be what we consider judgment proof. That's because the, ass the real assets that folks tend to have, their house, their car, things that they need for work, tend to be off limits because of the homestead uh because of the homestead laws and because the fact that Texas does in many ways protect debtors. Yes and no. Yes and no. Okay. You're going to correct me again. Uh, again, because if you don't pay mm -hmm. your Chase visa, mm -hmm. you might get sued. 
And you might say, I'm in Texas. True, but they can't kick you out of your house. They cannot foreclose. This is true. And I don't think they can garnish your wages, or can they? Do you know? They cannot garnish your wages unless they get a judgment in another state, and that's called... Okay, Heidi's gonna. She's gonna Let's throw. She's gonna here throw we go. something we're, we're at me. We're about to get a million dollar word here. Not a million dollar word. Just you can export your foreign judgment. Export your foreign. Yes. Yes. Okay. So then you can garnish wages. And and you know this is Collin County. We have a lot of people who've moved here from other places because their mm-hmm. companies have brought them here. So maybe they came. They work for Toyota. They came from California. They might owe a credit union in California. That credit union sues them in California. Mm -hmm. They get a judgment in California. They can export the foreign judgment and garnish their wages. And they come here, center of the universe. Center of the universe. Right here. Yeah. Frisco, USA, VentureX Studios. And they can file a bankruptcy, Mm -hmm. and we can stop that wage garnishment, even though it's a foreign judgment. But anyway, as I was saying. Okay, as you were saying. Chase Visa can sue you. They can get a ju- You say, I'm in Texas. I'm not going to do anything with this lawsuit. Mm-hmm. Let them get a judgment against me. And they do. They abstract that judgment against your home. Mm-hmm. They can't foreclose the way your mortgage company can foreclose right. because of the homestead protection. But when you get ready to sell the house. You've got to negotiate that loan, that, that, that lien yeah. away because you yep. can't pass good title. Yep. Uh, without without making sure that that lien is gone. So I like when I like for my clients mm-hmm. when you get sued, call me. Let's c- come on in and we'll figure out. Do you need a bankruptcy? Can we you know do something with this lawsuit? Maybe we cut a deal with the creditor because you really don't need a bankruptcy. So I do that too. But um, but maybe you need a bankruptcy. Now bankruptcy also stays litigation. It does. So talk about that. And by stay, uh, I mean pause. So um, talk about how that works. So if Chase Visa has sued you and you file bankruptcy, they cannot continue to pursue you in state court, which is typically where they're going to sue you. It might be JP court, Mm -hmm. might be county court at law, might be district court if you have a really big visa bill. And so that litigation is stayed. Mm -hmm. If if you file a Chapter 7, that lawsuit's completely gone. It's probably completely gone if you file a 13, too, because in a 13... They can file a claim to collect just like Mm -hmm. your other creditors are collecting in a 13. So a person who files a 13 or a 7, um, they file the paperwork. There's a payment plan. In a 13, there's a payment plan. So there, there, you can't just, you can't just decide, I want to file a 7 because I don't want to do a payment plan. I'm current on my mortgage. I'm current on my car. I just want to get rid of my credit card debt. I want to file a 7. You can't just do that. There's something called the means test to determine whether or not you're eligible for Chapter 7. And that's where a lot of that planning goes in. Um, Mm -hmm. Some of my colleagues call me the queen of Chapter 7 because I'm going to figure out a way. I'm Mm -hmm. going to press to figure out how can we file a Chapter 7. The name of your childhood band also... When in Detroit, no, not we, the queens of no, Chapter Seven. No, that was not. Remember not, back back then, I was going to be a pediatrician. Oh, that's right. But the shots, so, yeah, the, the shots. shots, the shots were a, a deal yeah. breaker. Okay, yeah. um, so back to the Chapter Seven. So, so you cannot, um, you don't automatically. So, you, Chapter Seven is not a way for somebody who wakes up in the morning and says, you know, I'm tired of paying this twenty four point nine nine percent interest. Um, and then I'm just going to go see Theta, and she's just going to wave her magic wand. I won't have to pay this anymore. So you're saying it, it's not yeah. nearly that simple. Right. And I, you have to qualify for that. Right. I do have a magic wand. It's packed up. It's at home. I don't really bring it out. But, mm-hmm. yeah. For people but, who pay their bill on time. <sighs> yes. Exactly. But, but so there is there's income and household size qualifications. And then sometimes we can do what's called because there's horrible words all right she's really she's probably gonna throw a shoe at me there's something called the presumption of abuse presumption of abuse of the bankruptcy sounds like something from the da's office (sighs) no this is so what's the presumption of abuse it's my understanding and i have this on very good authority that there was bourbon and congressional staffers and lobbyists involved 
no, say it's not true. It is true. Okay. And the bankruptcy laws changed in 2005, and so that's when this came about. So there might, you might have a presumption of abuse, and that would mean maybe you can't file a Chapter 7. But if you have a really good lawyer, your lawyer can rebut that presumption Mm -hmm. and get you a Chapter 7 discharge. Do you happen to know one that may or may not be the queen of Chapter 7? Okay. I, I do. Theta Page. Yeah. She's pretty good. She's the reconstructionist. That's what I've heard. That's yeah. what I've heard. Uh, yeah. uh, so what what happens with um, sometimes there's a dynamic within a bankruptcy, maybe more sort of a business bankruptcy, where somebody's got a good relationship with a creditor and they want to keep it. They want to keep that relationship. It could be in an individual situation, maybe my home lender. Oh, yeah. Don't want to make them angry. Yeah, you're going to, as long as you pay for your home, uh-huh. you keep your home. Okay. As long as you pay for your car, you keep your car. In a Chapter 7, you have to sign an agreement with the car lender that says, I promise to pay just like I never filed a bankruptcy. So if you miss a payment after bankruptcy, they can repossess your car. They can sue it for 10 cents on the dollar and get a deficiency balance. How do they avoid the discharge? Because the bankruptcy, as I understand it, and is you, you, it's like a game of shoots and ladders, right? I've never played shoots and ladders. Um, so, uh, do you need me to do sports analogies? I can do that. Okay. I can do sports. I can do a sports analogy. Go okay, ahead. Okay, so we can drive the football all the way down the field. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that's the chapter seven. And then when we get in the end zone, that's the discharge, right? Yep. You cross the goal line. That's the discharge. But you, but not everybody gets to the goal line. Oh yeah. Oh, um, um, pretty much you are. You pretty much are getting to the goal line. Absolutely. But once you, but you got to pre, you got to qualify on the right. front end. Right. So that's the that's the trick. Right. And there, you have to take a class mm-hmm. before you file your bankruptcy. You have to take a class after you filed bankruptcy. If you don't take that second class, you are not getting the touchdown. We talking about like an online class online. where I can play on my phone while I'm doing it, or are we talking like yeah. there's a test? No, there's no test. You can watch a Netflix movie and do your class. Okay. You just need a certificate of completion. Got it. You don't. Yeah. It, you don't have to score a ninety-five. You. No one checks your work. We just need a certificate of completion. Got it. So you know, if you want to outsource it to your kid, did I really say that? No, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> but I yes, uh, I, I I think I'm I think I'm I'm smelling what you're stepping in on that one. Yeah. What? Um, okay, so you, you get to the goal line. And then the the debt is discharged. But my question is, how does that creditor avoid the discharge? In other words, and I understand with like a house, but let's say I have a good relationship with, I don't know, my criminal lawyer, right? Um, Who I want to keep paying. In fact, we've had clients who, when they mentioned to us in bankruptcy, it kind of gets a little weird because I don't know that we can get paid. Um, necessarily, we can't collect because we've got that automatic stay. It doesn't have right. very much, but uh, maybe talk about that. How you how, how do you, how do certain types of lenders avoid? We well, can't that stay or the the discharge um, unless you sue the sue them in bankruptcy. Okay, and you can't just I don't want my debt discharged. I'm going to sue you. You have to have a reason, mm-hmm. and it's fraud. Mm-hmm. Someone and you have to prove that someone knowingly committed fraud. So let's say one of your clients owes you some money Mm -hmm. and they file a bankruptcy and you get that notice of bankruptcy Mm -hmm. and it says that you are stayed from collecting. Right. And then you get a discharge order in the mail. And so they've discharged $20,000 that they owe to you. Mm -hmm. You cannot collect that money. You can't ask them for the money. You can't wink and nod. Now, you think I'm pretty cheap then, 20000 Okay. Yeah. Well, I know you criminal lawyers make a lot of money, so I just figured 20 was a good number. So. It's round. Well. <laughs> if they come to you and they say, Mr. Rosenthal, you are the best lawyer in the world. I hate that I file, had to file a bankruptcy, but it wasn't you. It was Visa and MasterCard, and they were suing me. Mm-hmm. I went to Miss Page. She said. Blame her. She said that. I have no legal obligation to pay you, but I can make a voluntary payment to you. And I want to make a voluntary payment to you. And you can say thank you. You can accept the voluntary payment, 
But you, what you can't do is say, you owe me 20, you just paid me 2,000, you now owe me 18. You can't have a running ledger. I, I mean, can't you make, can, do a wink, wink, nod, nod, grab right. you by the shirt. You, you're you going to make a voluntary payment. Right. None that. of that because I'm going to come after oh, you. Oh, no. Yeah. Certified mail. It might be certified mail. It might be email. I may show up at your office. It'll be like it's the queen of Chapter 7 is here right. for me right. with so her red glasses. You cannot do that. So what you're going to do is you're going to keep an internal ledger so you just know internally. Mr. Smith paid $2,000. Mr. Smith came back and paid 1000 But you're never going to send mm. Mr. Smith an invoice because Mr. Smith is going to bring that invoice to me, and you're going to hear from me. Man, I love – see, this is – one of the things I love about being a lawyer is we kind of talk, this is not just, you're not saying this and I'm not putting words in your mouth, but man, we all kind of envision ourselves as like these knife fighting ninjas, right? No. I do. No, no you don't. Okay. No. I, I mean that we're like no. climbing walls and I, I gave the example the other I'm day. I'm the queen. You're the queen. I, so what I, what I, I give this example a bit uh, in some cases uh, I am knocking over trash cans and shop, I'm throwing shopping carts and I'm knocking over fruit stands. But the bad monster who's chasing me, the state of Texas, is eventually going to eat me. You know, but it, it, I, we'll go with knife fighter, okay. Arnold Schwarzenegger commando. We, you know, that's kind of how we see ourselves. Okay, at least me. I mean, I'll be back. That's right. Yeah. Think of that yeah. next time you're knitting, you know, and you're doing your your genealogy. I think this is going to wrap it up for this most successful episode of the Lawyer Show podcast. I feel like we really, next time, I would really like to get into some of the deeper sections and chapters. Of the bankruptcy code? Please. Okay. I've got, I've got an app for that. Do you really? I do. All right. Yeah. Do you want to? Okay. <laughs> we can, uh, I wasn't going to share it. And we, another thing we need on the Lawyer Show, we need, we need a sign-off thing. Like a, like a, I don't know. Like, we'll, we'll work, we're going to work yeah, on it. So, should. but let's give a shout out to Theta and her firm. Like, what's your the, website? What's third, your good, good idea. We'll have it, we'll end it on there. What's okay. your, what's your th uh, website, Theta, and, it, it and how can people get a hold of you? PageLawFirm.com, and that's P A G E, just like page in a book. PageLawFirm.com. I've Excellent. got a YouTube channel, the Page Law Firm. And I have little snippets of video for people if they want to come learn a little bit about bankruptcy. And I'm on Instagram. At, oh, on the gram. I'm on the gram at Theta Page. Excellent. Well, you heard it here. We will see everybody next week on the Lawyer Show podcast. Thank you. Thank you.